I'm gonna show you the easiest way of making a DIY power station using this EG4 inverter and this Vader server rack battery. Now the reason I like using server rack batteries is just because they're really easy to use and I can move them by myself. I really like the wall mount batteries that are offered by Signature Solar in EG4, but they're 300 pounds, whereas this is about 100 pounds. So it's easy for me to move around. I can put this on a cart and have a portable solar generator that I can take anywhere with me. I personally really like using solar generators or pre-built power stations because you just grab it and it's done. You power it on and it's pretty much ready to go out of the box. What I'm gonna be building here today with this 3000 EHV48 inverter that I bought from Signature Solar is basically a copy of one of these Apollo solar generators. And by doing so, it will actually save me about $2,300 compared to buying a pre-built solar generator. So this is a really easy option, but it becomes more complicated once you get into the expansion and so on. So if you're looking for a system that you can grow to be really big in the future, I would just go to poweredportablesolar.com, look at the Apollo or the Delta Pro Ultra or the other solutions that are already pre-built there, because then you can just pull it out of a box connect it and you're good to go. But if you're looking for a build to do that's very simple and has really good power, just looking for 120 volt power, not necessarily gonna run the whole house or anything, then this is a really good option. This is super simple. And I think everybody who's doing a DIY setup should go with something like this. If you wanna see where I do a video where I take a 240 volt split phase inverter and do this exact same setup, then comment down below split phase. And that'll let me know that you guys want me to make another video like this, showing you how to have a system that's capable of running your whole house, but it's still an off grid setup. There's only a few things you're gonna need. Obviously the inverter, I bought mine from Signature Solar. I'll have links down below with coupon codes or anything that I have. This Vader battery, I think it's Vader, I call it Vader, it's Vatrare. But this is only $940 right now, so it was a really good price system. The biggest thing that this battery doesn't have is a communication cable. So this is gonna be a very simple system, no communication setup. This is as basic as it gets. I have some eight gauge PV wire and it's bare on one end with MC4 connectors on the other. This will allow for up to 5,000 watts of solar input, which is way more than most solar generators. It's on par with the Apollo. It's way more than the F3800, double that of the Delta Pro 3 double that of the AC300 from Blue Eddy. And the Delta Pro Ultra technically has 5,600 watts, but that's 4,000 and 1,600. So you'd have to have two separate arrays to beat it, but you definitely can with the Delta Pro Ultra. Now the Vader battery is very simple. It's just like any other server rack battery out there without the communication. And to power it on, I'm just gonna flip over this breaker. And I think they actually just came out with a new model of this. I've actually been running this system for like three or four weeks now at my house, running these crypto miners and stuff like that. I've already put this all together and then I disassembled it just for this video. But once you flip the breaker over, you can push the power button and then the screen turns on. Let's start first with the inverter and getting it connected to the battery and the solar connection. There are two screws, one on each side. This is our wall charging in, AC output out in order to run stuff, and then the battery input. You can see it shows here a diagram on where each piece goes. This is ground, load, neutral, load, neutral, positive, negative. Start with my PV wire. Positive goes on the left, negative goes on the right. Now the battery cables come with these silver caps, which are called ferrules. It basically forces all the copper wiring to be together. We're just gonna push these in here. I'm gonna put the positive in on the left and the negative in on the right. Now really what I need is I need one male connector and one female connector. I don't need them to be very long because this is a very simple system. I'm gonna do six inches from the bottom of the connector. Now you will need some big loppers like this. I'm do the same here. And now I have a second female connection left over on this. I can cut that at six inches. And then the next time I go to do a project like this again, I bought this blank male connector, which is a TT30P, and I'll cut off a section, and then it will go on like that, and I can basically dual purpose this wire. I wanna expose a couple of inches of the wires. You gotta be really careful here to not hit the inner wires. Oops, I scored that one just a little bit. I usually try to cut through just enough that I have to rip it like this to get the rest of it off. So I wanna make sure there's no exposed copper. We're good there. Then I'll do the same on this one. So where I have a TT30P here, this is with the prongs. I'm gonna push that in. The black is the load, white is the neutral, and green is the ground. 
I probably could have stripped these back a little bit more. So it's gonna go green, black, white. Just wanna make sure you're only getting copper inside, no sheathing. As I got a little bit of sheathing in there. Yeah, this is where I should have stripped it back a little bit more. Okay, give it a good tug. Not coming out. On to the black. Give each one of those a good tug, making sure nothing's coming loose. Looks good. Now for the AC output, all I've done is taken some green electrical tape and capped off the green wire because we don't need it. And then we're gonna go black on the left, white on the right. Black represents our load and white represents our neutral. In the end, this is what we're working with. AC in, AC out, solar, and battery. I'm gonna put this cover back on. Now really, all that's left is to get this battery cable connected. The red can go on either terminal and same with the black. Now, the battery connections are the last thing that I do and you always wanna make sure that your breaker is in the off position. That way there's no chance of having any power on these terminals. So the first thing to do now is turn on the breaker. The nice thing about doing a setup like this is you don't need to use a resistor in order to pre-charge the inverter because there are capacitors in here that will basically take a big shock when you're connecting these batteries. And because of this breaker, you don't have to worry about that. And then on the bottom of the inverter, here's the on switch. Now we have a fully functioning DIY power station. Let's go ahead and make sure we're getting 120 volt power out of this. Make sure I set it to volts AC. 120 volts and 50 hertz. Now from what I've read, these inverters stay at 50 hertz power. Here in America, we use 60 hertz power. Uh, like Japan uses 50 hertz. So supposedly this stays at 50 hertz until you plug something in. So let's go ahead and plug something in and make sure it doesn't ruin it. That's where this adapter comes in. This allows me to have multiple outlets. This is basically just a power strip. I'm gonna use a heat gun to put a heavy load on it. Also, I like this because it has this light here that indicates that there's power. Now, the screen is a little primitive. You have to scroll through it to get your readings as far as input and output. But as long as you know you're not using more than 3000 watts, you really don't have to worry about it. And I'm gonna show you here the solar in just a second. So scrolling through here, I'm pushing the down button. We can see that our AC output is on. We are not charging and there are no faults. but it's still saying 50 Hertz right here. And there's our load at 1500 Watts. So supposedly this should be doing 60 Hertz now. Now uh, here it says it's still 119.7 volts and 50 Hertz. Cause when I went to go change it in the settings, it would not change. To get into the settings, all you do is press and hold the enter button. You'll hear a beep. Now you're in programming mode. Starting on page 19 of the user manual, you can get into all the programming settings. Here it says output frequency is number nine, and we want to change it to 60. It says 50 hertz, so I'm gonna press enter, switch it to 60, press enter, and escape, and it automatically goes back to 50 hertz. So on the screen, we can see we're pulling 31.5 amps at 52 volts. If you do that math, it's basically 1500 watts. But we have the option to click on these different buttons and you can actually turn off discharging and charging on the battery itself and see the individual millivolts of all of the cells inside the batteries. So this screen's really helpful to know what's going on internally within the battery. In my other LifePower 4 batteries that run my house, these don't have a screen. Only the EG4LL batteries have a screen, but these do have communications to help keep each other better balanced because this is such a large stack of batteries. Now, while this is discharging, I wanna be able to input my solar into this. On my Apollo setup, I do run 13 400 watt panels onto each one of these Apollos. I'm gonna go ahead and steal from this Apollo, which is already fully charged and it's only noon. It was at 0% this morning. And I'm just gonna use this as an extension. So the VOC that I have on this right now is 464 volts. This inverter will allow up to 500 volts of VOC. The VOC is just a rating that's on the back of the solar panel. It's how much voltage the solar panel makes when no power is on it. So you wanna make sure you're below that highest input because otherwise you'd fry the charge controller. I've just got my red to red, black to black. We'll go ahead and turn this on. And now the charge indicator light is blinking and we can see that the battery is going up. If you wanna see how much power we're bringing in, all we do is we scroll through. We can see that the voltage, now our VMP, is now at 383 rather than 460. 
at eight amps, bringing in 3.5 kilowatts. Which means on the screen now, it says that it's charging. Now, because this is a DIY portable kind of setup, you could use something like these solar panel legs that I've invented. They're at poweredportablesolar.com. But these literally just clamp onto any solar panel and you can use them portably to set them up. We're coming up with an anchoring system. I've also built these DIY wood stands. It really doesn't matter what you do to get your solar input. I've even got these 26 solar panels on a Sinclair ground mount that I installed. And basically one of these rows of panels is what is currently running this DIY solar generator setup right now. The other alternative is to go with a roof mount like this. A roof mount is much easier to install for sure. There's a lot less work to it. You can probably get it done in a day or two, but you do get less solar input compared to a ground mount because the ground mount can tilt more towards the sun. One of the things to note about this inverter is that it does have pretty loud fans. It's working hard to make sure that it stays cool. It is pumping in a ton of energy from solar and pumping out a lot of energy to the heat gun. And it's all happening at the same time. Now this will wall charge up to 30 amps. So if you plug it into a normal wall outlet, make sure you go into the settings and drop the AC input charge amperage so that you're not exceeding 15 amps at the very most. But if you do have an RV plug, then go ahead and use a 30 amp fast charger. That's gonna be much more convenient for how fast it'll recharge the system. You could put up to six of these Vader batteries together. You could have a huge powerful system capable of running a ton of power throughout the house. And if you want, you get a second inverter and you get 240 volt split phase power, or you can get an auto transformer like this from Victron. And you can see that I have a 30 amp, 120 volt in, and a 50 amp, 240 volt out. And basically this spins up the 120 volt power so that it outputs 240 volt into here. So by connecting this input to this AC output, I could actually get 240 volt power to run my house, but I'd still be limited to the 3000 watt output of this inverter. This is like five or 600 bucks. Again, I bought this with my own money. So it would make more sense in my opinion to just get another one of the inverters and connect two of them together or there's another way that's even easier to do the split phase power. That's where I want you to comment down below. Just say split phase in the comment and I will show you both this option and the other option if that's what you'd like. If you also wanna see me put more of these Vader batteries together in a DIY setup so you have even more capacity, put that in the comments down below and just say expansion. So split phase and expansion, you can even put both in the comment, that's fine. But if you're in an RV, cabin or just want DIY backup that's super affordable, this is the system that I would go with. If you're concerned about putting it all together and making it work and having customer support with warranty and service and so on, then I would definitely go with something else like a solar generator because it's just an all-in-one box. You pull it out, turn it on, and it works. If you want to see a video on how I've actually taken my house off-grid using solar generators, go ahead and click this link. In the meantime, be prepared. Have some form of backup power, whether that's a gas generator, solar generator, DIY power station, whatever it is, just have enough for your needs to make sure you can have power when you need it the most. Thanks guys, be prepared. See you on the next video.